I just think about all the things I dreamed about in high school and now I'm here and it's like, is this it? Is this the dream? Fans cannot wait for Zoe 102. Um, how surreal is it for you though to kind of go back into this world? I keep saying this, but it's like I have to pinch myself because it's something we've worked on really hard for years to get, you know, being patient, make sure it's right, putting the right things in place. And then it's like a dream come true. It's like this thing you've been talking about and working on right. and trying to like bring to life. The first day I walked on set, I was like, oh my gosh, we like, we really did it. We're here, we're doing it. So it's, it's just, it is surreal. It was like a pinch me moment a lot of times. Goodbye Pacific Coast Academy, hello adulthood. 15 years after Zoe 101 wrapped, Jamie and her boarding school besties return to Malibu for the follow-up movie, Zoe 102. So, you all went to high school together? Yeah, PCA, baby! What was the first day like back on set, though? Did it feel like a high school reunion of sorts? The first day back on set for me, my scene was actually more in like the Zoe world that doesn't have her friends in it. But we, towards the end of the shoot, we basically were all together like the, in every scene. Mm. And I'm so glad they did it that way because it was like, it was, it really was like that was our high school. We grew up together and then getting to do this again, we were like crying Aww, when we rapped because really? it felt so fulfilling, but also like just one of those experiences that I don't think you could ever recreate, but totally. we got to do that. They're all grown up. Where do we find Zoe and the gang uh, when we meet them again this summer? Well, you're gonna find them all over the place. <laughs> um, in true Zoe fashion, you know, she's a fixer and a planner, but she's also in the midst of her own kind of personal identity, mm. like, am I where I want to be? Am I, she's looking at Instagram, she's looking at her friends who are, you know, we all do this in we real life. We compare ourselves. And I wanted it to be really important that, you know, Zoe, when we left off, she was always perfect. Like she always, everything was with a bow on it. And I wanted to see her where our generation is, is kind of the struggle of, you know, measuring up and feeling good enough and not having all the answers and being okay with that, but sure. also taking the steps to change that. I need someone to play my boyfriend at my best friend's wedding. Oh. Hi. Hi, I'm Hugo Hemsworth, Zoe's boy. Oh boy, wow, that's a strong grip. And jawline. When you wrapped the series way back when, did you imagine that you would be revisiting these characters and bringing a movie to life? I knew that growing up, Zoe was such like an important, she was like a part of my childhood. Totally. Like we grew up together. Like I was so ingrained in that character. So revisiting her was something I always dreamed of, but I was like, can that really ever happen? In mm. what world do- And what does it look like, right? Yeah, and too, like, it's like, who gets to do something like that twice? And True. it's one of those things that I wasn't sure if it could ever happen, but I always dreamed of being able to do it and see where she is and yeah. and to get to do it and then be happy about doing it mm -hmm. was, was a big win. There's a lot of people who came back, yes. but we're missing, of course, Victoria Justice and Paul Butcher and Austin Butler. What do you want fans to know about how you guys will address their absences? Well, they're part of the Zoe family and Forever, they right? always will yeah. be. Um, I think that you see they're all, they're doing so well in their careers and I, we have nothing but love and support for them. And hopefully they get to be a part of the continuation of the Zoe story mm. if we get to do this whole new Zoe era. And um, I just think it's just a testament to what a, you know, magical lightning in a bottle experience we had. Now, are we talking a saga, a potential saga here? A Zoe 103 maybe? Yeah, I think that the movie sets the tone for a new era of Zoe that really connects to our generation. And I would love to go on to figure out, you know, where do all of them end up after this? I really think you're overreacting. Are the girls, have they become big fans of Zoe 101 over the years? Well, my my youngest one has discovered it. Now oh, my yeah. oldest one's like, she's like, I'm not watching your show. And, and I find it odd that my little one wants to watch the show. Cause I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm like walking around like, hey, watch hey, mommy's show. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, like, turn it off, turn right. it off. She calls it Zoe number one <laughs> because she feels like we went to North Carolina to shoot her movie. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, and I let her believe that. You were 13 when you started the show. Nearly the same age as your teenage daughter, right? She, uh, mm -hmm. she just turned 15. Yes, yeah, she did. Maddie, I mean, like, how full circle does it feel to be reliving this character with a teenager yourself? Well, having a teenager, you're like, oh gosh, like, is, what what thing is she gonna tell me today yeah. that I did wrong? So she said, she got to see the movie and she actually said, mom, your movie's really good. She's like, I kind of thought maybe it'd be silly. She's like, but it's good. And I was like, oh wow, that was like the biggest compliment you could ever give me. 
Spoiler alert, in this movie, premiering next Thursday on Paramount Plus, Jamie's five and 15 year old daughters make an appearance. Hey, is that the car from Love Fully Charged? No, I'm pretty sure it is. It must have been so special for you to kind of share this experience with them and then they also get like a little speaking role. Having my two girls be a part of this film and get to make their little debut cameo, if you will. Yeah. It was so special because they got to do it together. And just seeing those two worlds collide, it was like a really proud moment for me as a mom. To, and two, she told me, she's like, when she saw the set and saw like this, you know, the production and what it was, she was like, mom, I can't believe that like they're all here because this is the movie that you've created. It was really a special moment. July, what an exciting month for you because yeah. season three of Sweet Magnolias uh, is also going to premiere. I overstepped. I get that. What can you share about what you guys have in store for this third season? Just when you think that Serenity, this little town, won't surprise you, you just find out they've got some more secrets to share. Yeah. These are real life things that people are going through with their teenagers and what they're going through with their family and in a small community, but also in larger communities. So I just think for me, I love being a part of like this whole cast as a whole. It feels really like we are this family, family and yeah. I'm just, it's also, it was coming back into this experience of like working. It was my first acting job after I'd had Ivy. Right. Oh, I thank God for that. Really? It really is just the most wonderful thing to be a part of.